Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you Monday, July 8th. Looks like we're going to have a very summery trading day today. As in low impact, uh, quiet summer day. This is the Monday after the Friday. We're non farms beat. 220,000 uh, was a pretty good beat. Dollar appreciated on Friday. We'll see what she does today. Uh, we also have German industrial production in an hour's time. German trade balance. These are, uh, I would say, moderate releases. Usually not uh, not backbreakers either way. Um, but because the German industrial production has been so bad. Uh, the releases have been so bad, uh, it will be watched m relatively closely, expecting plus 0 0.4. Let's take a look at the charts. Um, we talked about it on Twitter a little bit. Morgan Stanley downgraded their global equity uh, exposure. S&Ps are down 10 handles. No real drama here. Uh, we had a real good chance of having a bearish day on Friday we did monetize with that move down to 71 but we were looking for a close down at 71 so we could really sink our teeth into something we did not get that so for now we're still just trading this thing um, same sort of standard procedures up here caution uh, we don't sell low ones because the trend is higher but we do sell high ones so any price between 29.90 and 3000 today we will sell tactically and trade from the short side let's take a look at the currencies euro now is in the middle of nowhere which is kind of the story of the last nine months right we've basically been 111.50 113.50 for nine months now so annoying uh, we broke the 200 day 10 days ago and now we're back below it the range lows are 111 10 we'll call it 111 11 just because that's a fun number um, so not much conviction here this could go either way obviously the European data is horrible US uh, market looks okay but we have the big moment on Wednesday when we have uh, Powell speaking in front of Congress. Um, so this this is our real sort of line in the sand moment. 10 a.m. New York time um, on Wednesday, or we may even start testimony uh, at 9 a.m. No, 10 a.m., sorry. 10 a.m. on Wednesday, um, he will testify. That same day, we will get minutes um, from the last FOMC meeting. The minutes should be bearish. It'll be interesting to see if Powell, uh, if Eagle, starts rearing its ugly head here in this little battle between the Fed and the President about whether to cut rates or not. It'll be very interesting, and the markets are going to move a lot on Wednesday. But until Wednesday, I think we're just going to range around, float around a bit. I do have a couple things uh, on my mind. Um, let's have a look at the charts, and we can we can show them to you. First of all, we have this U.S. Uh, US yield on the 10-year. Where is this chart here? Two hundred one point eight. We went up to 07, 069, So now we have one, two, three, four daily highs here at 07. Uh, as you will all remember, um, really seems like almost a month ago now. We're looking to buy this through through two ten. We got up to oh nine nine. Um, now we're just going to lower this entry and try and buy bonds 
when the rates go above 207 so we're actually selling the futures contract uh, we're not trading the rates this isn't there's not a contract for rates we're selling the physical bonds for those of you who are not um, used to bond trading and if you're not used to bond trading don't trade them I mean it this bonds are like any other asset class it takes years and 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 years, and years to be able to make money on this stuff um, and it's even a slightly more complicated than stocks or currencies for that matter um, but anyway if you know bonds and you don't normally trade them this might be a chance to uh, to take a look we like it mainly because the market is massively short all the risk parity funds out there are short and leveraged short you know these guys are leveraging their bond positions by two, three, four, five, sometimes eight times um, to balance this whole risk risk parity, this risk neutral type of portfolio. And when this starts to unwind, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a little silly, and there's going to be a massive uh, rush to the exit. Will 207 and 210 be that rush to the exit? Certainly, it doesn't feel like it. Um, but we have some fireworks coming on later this this week on the rates side with Powell speaking so we're gonna keep a very close eye on this what else is out there let's go to dollar e EMS e dollar EM for a second uh, Erdogan fired the central banker we all know True story, I, I once wrote a song about Erdogan. It went something like this. Erdogan, every now and then I get a little bit lonely. And I used that song's uh, theme to write a song about Erdogan. But um, people I work with said that uh, someone may uh, try and attack our website or if I started screwing around with turkey so I never really published that song but um, wow this guy unbelievable anyway cost uh, his currency 1500 um, points close to 3% at the highs now it's uh, down the Turkish layer is down 2% two, two I would not fade this um, you know if you think Trump acts like a headless chicken um, go have a look at what's going on in Turkey. More importantly for us, this bleeds into um, some of the other emerging markets. We bought Dollar Czar yesterday, uh, Friday. We talked about this. We think this is going to trade up to 1455 this week. So we're core long Dollar Czar. We're trading it for now because we really want a convincing. Uh, close above 1422 which we did not get Friday we took out stops to 1427 but then we traded all the way back down to 1416 uh, we own some of this stuff and we're trading it on the long side looking for a move uh, back up to 1455 as those of you who have been following this channel for a while you know we enjoy uh, selling the RAND uh, just because the country is full of uh, economic problems and corruption uh, even though we love the country and it seems that every single person we meet from that country is amazing um, from afar and then from the news flow that we see it just looks like a whole load of trouble um, not to mention the fact now that we have the conventional market, long emerging markets, um, going into what we think could be risk off and higher rates. So that does not make any sense to us at all. Long dollars are looking for 1455.60 this week. Let's take a look at this Aussie. This is now very key, this 7050 talked about this our trade of the week last week we cut it uh, and if we had followed exactly what we had written our stop was supposed to be above 7050 but because we were at 7030 going into non-farms we just cut it 
shame. Um, for now, we have two interesting parameters. We have 70-50 on the top side, massively important. Could be this huge double top. Your neckline now becomes 68-35. But more importantly, on the day, we have this 65-58. Um, three daily lows down there. Uh, we like the left-hand side on this based on China weakness, based on dollar strength. But you could also make an argument that this could go higher, uh, especially because we have Bank of Canada on Wednesday. Good chance they raise rates. Um, and if they do, Aussie will go higher in sympathy. Um, if they don't, uh, then it'll be status quo. But this will be very interesting to watch on Wednesday. We're, we're not really sure where we stand on that as far as the Bank of Canada is concerned. But um, this will be very interesting. One of the few hawkish central banks making a decision on Wednesday. These guys and the Norwegians. Moving on, uh, Euro Yen. This trend line is super interesting. This is the daily line going back from... 2016. We've been teasing with this down here. Um, 120.80 lows. This low here is 120.95. It just looks like we're going to test and break this line. Is it going to be dollar yen driven or euro yen driven? I don't know. Um, but if it's risk off, I mean, is it going to be dollar yet dollar yen or euro dollar driven? I don't know. But if it's risk off euro yen. Um, might hit the skids if European data still is in the shitter. Again, we don't know. We're just going to trade price on this. Uh, it comes in at 120.77, so it's not for today, but this is something to watch later in the week. Dollar max. If you look at this, we have this very straightforward head and shoulders, your neckline, 18.90. Um, we don't trade dollar max too often, but we will be trading this as a sort of standard break trade. We'll have to check price action if we get below 1895 to see the exact entry. But this is a nice little pattern here on dollar max. Pretty strong head and shoulders with a very big target, especially because. You have these lows down here at 75, which also should break if this target comes, if this pattern comes good. Loads of clear air. Um, just a technical candlestick pattern there. Uh, the global macro story here is very mixed, um, but this is just a level we want to watch. If Powell is massively dovish, uh, this could be the trigger here. So we'll see what happens. Gold, we talked about it on Twitter on Friday. We're fishing for cheap ones down here, down there at 1390. Now we're just trading it from the long side. The real support doesn't come in until 1365. But it just feels like um, we may not see that. So you want to have some small amount of gold longs at as great of an average as you can have. So if you did buy 92s, you'd go ahead and sell half of it between 02 and 05. So now you're long at sort of 80. Then you can rebuy dips and resell uh, and try and get yourself into a real safe position. The breakout here is obviously through these two highs. And if we do get through those, there's just there's tons and tons of clear air. This is the weeklies. I mean this is now uh, 1442 is now like if you this breaks this thing could go a thousand dollars higher um, so core long I think is the way for a lot of different reasons obviously if Powell's massively hawkish this gold will go lower so you want to be careful now and you want to kind of keep your powder dry for Wednesday it's a very binary day uh, but we like core longs, uh, social amounts, getting a better average uh, for a possible move higher. A lot of reasons gold could go higher. I don't, we don't want to get into them all right now. But 
Uh, one last thing I'm going to say. What was I looking at? I guess we can talk about Euro Sterling and Cable. This bearish engulfed Euro Sterling. I don't pretend to understand what's going on Brexit and Bojo and and this or that, but it did bearish engulf. Confirmation would be price prices below 89.55. Cable did not close below the 125.08. Again, I don't understand it, but just technically, Euro Sterling bearish engulfed at the highs. Pointing that out to all of you. Okay, feels like there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, our main focus is long dollar rand today. Um, we're going to sell stocks on high ones. We're going to also sell Aussie on high ones. Dollar Swiss, you can probably pick some of this up between 72 and 77. Basically, we're still leaning on the long dollar side of this, recognizing that there should be a range trade today and nothing massive should happen. Um, and watching, waiting, and thinking about how we're gonna how we're gonna make a lot of money on Wednesday when we have Powell and the Bank of Canada. Anyway, good luck today. Make some dough out there, people, and uh, I'll see you. I'll see you on Tuesday. Ciao.